The type of servers we are covering are often referred to as industry standard. They can also be referred to as x86 or Intel architecture. These terms all refer to the way in which Intel and IBM originally architected the PCs from which these servers evolved back in the early 1980s. There are other server types you may have heard of, such as Unix servers and mainframe servers. These are not covered here. Industry standard is where volume is highest and where demand is strong across the broadest range of organization sizes. Servers are designed to serve many users, whereas a personal computer, as the name suggests, is for a single user. Similar to PCs, servers contain processors, memory, hard drives for data storage and can run a wide range of software or applications. Servers come in various shapes and sizes, typically falling into the following categories. Universal or tower, similar in layout to tower PCs but typically larger with lots of expansion room internally for disk drives, memory and processors. Sometimes housed under a desk or more often on a shelf in a computer room, they can often be mounted sideways into a 19 inch rack by adding rack mounting rails. Racks are large metal cabinets used to house multiple servers and other devices in computer rooms and data centers. 19 inch refers to the standard width catering for devices from multiple vendors. Rack optimized servers are typically much lower in height than tower servers designed to make better use of the space available within 19 inch racks. The height is measured in units or U, one U being 1.75 inches. The most popular formats are one U and two U. Blade servers slot into a proprietary blade chassis. The chassis itself is then installed into a standard 19 inch rack. Depending on the blade manufacturer, the chassis can house varying numbers of servers as well as other devices such as storage blades and networking switches. Blades offer the ultimate in rack density and by accommodating multiple devices connected by a neat backplane, cabling and device management can be simplified. All of this comes at a price, which means blades are not right for every situation. Think about your own organisation or other places you have worked. Did you ever notice where the servers are located? All organisations have them, so why can't you see them? We have already ascertained that as the number of users accessing a server increases, so reliability becomes more important. This characteristic of a server is often referred to as availability. It's the ability of the server to keep running and avoid failure. One way of helping this is to locate the server in a secure environment, away from people, with a clean power supply and sufficient cooling. Servers are out of view for good reason. Common server roles include the following. A file server is used to store and share files, spreadsheets, Word documents, pictures, MP3 files, etc. This type of data is referred to as unstructured data. If you have a shared network drive which you use at work, this will probably be sitting on a file server. The performance demands on file servers are relatively low and often these servers double up to manage print jobs, temporarily holding items to be printed and coordinating output to network printers. This dual role leads to the term file and print. Application server is another generic term and refers to machines which can run a wide range of applications such as warehouse management systems, contact management or order entry systems and can also be applied to all of the following more specific roles. A database server runs a database application, for example Microsoft SQL, Oracle or IBM databases. The type of data here is referred to as structured data because within the database it resides in predefined tables of information. Databases store, retrieve and manipulate data. Web servers have a different role which is to present information to users accessing websites. This could be internal or external to the organization. Web servers need to support potentially thousands of users. Some servers are used to run software which runs the infrastructure. A common example is a domain controller, which is a key component within a Microsoft-based infrastructure. It controls users and devices, and the permissions which enable them to interact. User network login is an example of this in action. 
email runs on servers. These applications interact behind the scenes with the email software running on your PC or laptop. Email has become very critical to most organisations, so these servers need to be specified accordingly. Traditionally, when applications were put into service, an individual server was deployed for each one, or in some cases multiple servers per application. This has led to inefficient use of server resources and expensive, complex deployments. Server virtualization is technology which is revolutionizing server infrastructure and enabling one physical server to perform multiple roles.